Uh, my name is Pat Healy. I'm an actor originally from Chicago, Illinois. I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm an actor and a screenwriter. Uh, I'm currently acting in a film called Compliance, which is uh, playing here at the festival. There are, there are many great character actors in our generation, but I like the, to uh, be included. I mean, the word can, can feel like an insult run sometimes. You know, starting in the 70s, people like Gene Hackman and uh, Robert Duvall and, uh, you know, uh, and in the 80s, people like Dabney Coleman and uh, Charles Durning, uh, you know, ascended to the ranks of, of uh, leading man while still being character actors. Um, more recently, people like Kevin Spacey or uh, Billy Bob Thornton, you know, have, have sort of gone the same route. So I've been fortunate in the last, well, five to ten years to, to, to actually, you know, play some lead roles and things that, and, and still be a character actor. So as long as I can do that and not just be the, you know, toothless wino number three that shows up and there's all oh, that guy. He's so funny when he shows up and looks weird. And I've never wanted to be like the guy on the commercials that is just, you know, it's so funny because he's weird looking or whatever, you know. I like the phrase uh, character actor, but I think it's a bit of a misnomer in that it's, it's not just, um, people who are, you know, I mean, every good actor is a character actor. I mean, Daniel Day-Lewis is, you know, the greatest character actor and the greatest leading man um, because he plays characters, you know. So uh, I guess it's like a designation between being a character actor and also being a movie star too, which I hope is true as well. Acting was something that I always knew how to do as a little kid because I was a ham at home and I performed and my parents got me into programs and things and I did school plays, you know, starting when I was eight or nine years old. So that was sort of my way into the business. Uh, and then about uh, two or three years after I'd been in Los Angeles, I, I worked my way into filmmaking by writing and directing and acting in a short. That, that went to Sundance that Bob Byington has actually acted in. And um, from there, I, I wanted to be making films. And I did not have a screenplay. I didn't know how to write a, a screenplay. So I spent about five years working on a screenplay that was based on that short called Mullet. And I never really got anywhere with the script. And uh, I decided to put it down finally. And when I did that, I, I wrote something else in two weeks which was a Western called Snow Ponies, and it, uh, I just wrote it to write it, but it completely launched my writing career, which is you know, where I make the bulk of my living now. Um, I guess I used those five years as, as training, you know, five years on a script that didn't work, but I was, I was learning how to write during that time. When I started writing, I wasn't conscious of how being an actor was, was influencing it, but what it was was it was very easy for me to start to have a conversation on page between two characters and to slip in and out of different voices because I had had that experience of slipping in and out of different characters and different voices for many years. So I, I, it wasn't my intent or, you know, like I said, it wasn't consciously done, but I realized that that was a great asset to me is those scripts and those films that I like the most really um, have great insight into character. And they are a sort of like a, you'd work a performance, or I would work a performance from, from the inside out rather than the outside in, which is a lot of what writing a lot of the time, especially for, for Hollywood movies, is, is outside in, because you have to do this outline first and, and figure out what everything is going to happen. And I sort of do the opposite, which is more like acting, which is just, you know, building it from the inside. And, not really knowing what's going to happen as you write it and sort of surprising yourself, which is, which is um, key to acting as well and key to uh, making a performance interesting and keeping people watch, uh, watching you. I'm always excited to show compliance. Um, it, it is very controversial and it, 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 I've never been in a screening where there wasn't a, um, a, a strong emotional reaction, whether negatively or positively. Usually it's a little bit of, of both, or usually a lot of, of positive, even though people are upset by it. They appreciate the film, and some sometimes uh, uh, just <laughs> spewing bile, you know, anger at it. Um, 
I, I would hope that because it's a Michael Moore's festival, there's a somewhat more liberal audience that appreciates what we're trying to do. Um, on the one hand, it's really exciting to be in a theater with a movie that you've worked on where there is such a, a visceral reaction. And if you sit in the theater, you'll be very, uh, you'll feel it. It's palpable. Um, working on a movie like The Innkeepers, which is a horror movie and a comedy, sitting in a, in a movie like that, people have a great release because they're always laughing or they're always screaming every few minutes. This movie is just like a corkscrew that just winds up and people get tight and there's no release ever, really. And um, it can be quite upsetting. I would hope that, I think the film is excellent. And I, you know, I like to introduce the film to, to sort of frame it in a way and say, you know, this film does bring up really strong emotional reactions from people who see it pretty, uh, pretty commonly. And um, if you feel upset or you feel you know, hurt or you're upset at me or the filmmakers or whatever, I, I encourage you to stay after and, and let's have a conversation about it because I think we can you know, um, get somewhere by talking about it. Because we had our first screening at Sundance and people just screamed literally as soon as it ended and then left the room. And the, the, they were sort of saying, you know, uh, something very negatively about the film that we don't feel is true. And, and the director, Craig Zobel, said, I agree with you. Why are we yelling? Let's talk about it. And they left. We don't want, we're not out to uh, upset people. The film's not controversial in a way that is, or we're out to rile people up. It really is a, a sort of, you know, uh, uh, a mirror into contemporary society that is oftentimes unpleasant. I thought, I've always thought that Werner Herzog was great. I've been to see, I've worked with him, but I've been to some screenings of his films where he introduces the films in a way that is so perfectly uh, shapes your viewing of it. Sort of almost in the way that he directs the camera to direct your eye where to look is sort of directing your mind and, and heart and what to expect from a film. And you have, have a really, you know, um, a different experience and a much more enriching experience. So that's what I hope to, to do whenever I, I do um, any of these appearances. And I, I certainly hope that, that Traverse City is, is no exception. Yeah, it's great. It's lovely. I mean, I, I got in under cover of darkness last night, so I didn't actually see the water till today, which is beautiful. Uh, and there's a street fair and all kinds of things going on here today, and everybody's been super lovely and pleasant. So I'm looking forward to seeing some films, and um, it's great to see the old theater, the state, and um, as, as a fan and someone who grew up and seeing movies in theaters like that, it's beautiful just to see the marquee. And st I stepped inside briefly last night. It's, I get a, 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 a you know a rising excitement from seeing that and seeing those people in there enjoying themselves. So I'm looking forward to a few more days here and relaxing. I'm going to take a, a boat cruise too one of these days too. So.